What's going on guys? Today we're gonna to be recovering a flash drive that I've seen many, many times before. So I kind of know where the problems uh, happen with this uh, unit, but I feel like it might be very useful to those who are starting this uh, uh, type of work from the beginning to kind of learn uh, what sort of things can happen and how to detect them. Uh, I didn't have any of that kind of stuff available to me when I was starting uh, my career in data recovery, but it's something that you will eventually learn as you go. The more you do, the more you will pick up and the better you are obviously gonna get. So uh, today's demonstration is gonna be a, something that can happen to many devices and uh, the design of the devices has a lot to do with it. And you gotta pay attention to that and take uh, into an account all the clues that you can get from your initial inspection and diagnostics. This is how I recover the data from these types of devices. Uh, there might be alternative ways on how that can be done, either through chip off or other means. But in this specific case, that's my go-to route. So enjoy the show and let me know what you think. Let's uh, start with this quick flash drive case that I just received uh, this week. This needs to be resolved. Um, combination on chips and the controller type are pretty good. Um, this is something I feel very confident that we will be finishing at the end. Let me just take the case number off of it. And yeah, we're gonna walk away with the data. Let's find out what it needs uh, first of all. So this is a 3267L controller. This is a Lexar flash drive and uh, not sure what's going on. I plugged it into DeepSpar unit so far. it. Um, produced nothing. So when we plug in the working flash drive, we see that there's eight, uh, five volts and it's consuming 90 milliamps, according to the stats on this thing. And so if we take our unit here, that is, that needs to be recovered, uh, consumption is zero. So right now, no power. Right now 5.2 so we have 5.2 we have absolutely nothing on this capacitor on this side and that's pretty much all she wrote on this side of the drive flash drive uh, if we flip it upside down we got a bunch of other components here and these components this is shows nothing nothing Nothing. Nothing on the switch. Nothing on the coil. 5.2 here. And that's going into, I guess, the controller. So, knowing these devices, um, I kind of know their flaw. Um, that is, you know, very typical for a lot of them. What keeps them in the casing, here we go. You see the, the case is made, so it has these um, retainers and the flash drive goes in them so it doesn't slide around. It has to have these cutouts. It's the easiest way to make a flash drive sit in a place without having to use glue and things like that. So that becomes automatically the weakest point for flexing, for bending, because, you know, if we look at the flash drive that's made by SanDisk, for example, why does SanDisk have so many connector problems? Well, because my friends, SanDisk devices, cuts are here and they line up right with the connector. So that makes sense, it's gonna just bend there and break there. But with the uh, Lexar flash drives like this, our connector is in a solid line. So this, these cuts are further down the line. So that is the most flexible part now. But where does that go? That goes across this capacitor and this side of the controller. Uh, look at the current monitor when um, I just apply a little bit of pressure on this controller. You see? It's uh, bumping up, but then as I let go, it goes away. I press, 
we got consumption, we got some sort of recognition even, that pull away and it's no longer recognized. So this is pretty obvious that we have some sort of bad connection there or a loose connection, I should say. So how can we take care of that? It's simple. You just need to um, heat it up, well, preferably with some proper tools and uh, reflow it. Let's turn on the fuel extraction and So instead of just, you know, heating it up and moving it around, we could technically do that. But uh, if you want to be thorough, you might want to get in there with a, a soldering iron and uh, redo all these sides. To redo the sides, you might want to uh, remove some of these components that are kind of jamming in the way. Like I would get rid of the switch, I would get rid of the, the coil rerun all the pads and then reseat the switch and the coil. So right now I got my uh, hot air set, set up in, um, three, at 365. The only thing I bump up the Airflow to 60, I had it set on 484. There she goes. I, I have it here, guys. It didn't go, didn't fly away. So these two are gone. It's just kind of heat it up and bump it a little bit. Now, technically that should be enough, but if you want to be 100% sure, you might want to do this as well. This is definitely not how I intended to grab this thing. All right, so now um, let's take the extension cord and I'm gonna toggle the power off. Grab the extension cord, plug this in. Let's see what our consumption level would be now. And instantly it's ramping up. So it's, it's 53, 39. At this point, guys, it looks like the work 
is done and uh, the device is fixed. If we go into the log, we got Lexar flash drive recognized. Let's start the imaging task. So what do we do now? We can go into exploring the file system. That's the most logical thing to do. We see that our device is built on FAT32 file system. And when we see that, we can go into building a map of used sectors by FAT. So this is everything that is in use. So all of the data that is present on the device is located in six gigs. So we don't need to image the whole thing. We can just grab this and scan it. And uh, as you can see, it's running at decent speed. It's uh, throttled down probably because of that extension cord that uh, we're using. So I'm actually going to put it on brief pause. Power it down. And plug it in directly. There's ID, if we can continue. Um, yeah, the speed didn't change, but why did it not change? We could probably bump it up. So if we go into settings, more settings, speed, okay, we'll select speed automatically all right guys i'm not gonna force it it's already gone through 15 percent we just need to capture six gigs of data to, to make this thing complete again as you guys can see we got the unit fully functional again the data just needs to be cloned and transferred to something that we can deliver it on to the client i'm posting videos about data recovery every week now and uh, if you guys are interested in learning more about the subject subscribe to the channel i'll see you all in the next episode and if you need this service there are always links in the description to find our contact and reach out to us to help you out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.